Chapter 1. Get to Know the American Pit Bull Terrier The reputation of the pit bull has been shaped by misunderstandings of the breed's history and genetics. Bronwyn Dickey, author of Pitbull, The Battle Over an American Icon, has done extensive research about the fighting reputation of the pit bull. Dickey states that the negative view of pit bull comes from the misperceptions of the breed and its history. Once a violent fighting dog, always a violent fighting dog. Because of their reputation, Dickey points out that the UK and many US cities and communities have banned pit bulls as a dangerous breed. But there is no scientific evidence that proves this fact. A huge part of the problem with pit bulls is their misidentification. In 2014, Kevin Vicente, a four-year-old little boy, was attacked by Mickey the pit bull. The authorities felt that the dog needed to be put down because it was a vicious breed. Dog lovers were up in arms and questions were asked, are you sure this is a pit bull? After genetic testing, it was found that Kevin's bites did not come from a dog with any pit bull DNA. This incident shows that there is a stereotype in the perception of what constitutes a pit bull. Jeffrey Sachs at the CDC illustrates that when talking about fatalities caused by pit bulls, the breed identification is often inaccurate. The classification as a pit bull has expanded over the years to be any dog with a large head and a short coat. Authorities do not take the time to genetically test a vicious biting dog to see if they have any pit bull in their genetics. A pit bull is not one breed, it is at least four breeds. There's the American Pit Bull Terrier, the American Stratfordshire Terrier, the Stratfordshire Bull Terrier, and a newer breed called the American Bully or the American Stratfordshire Terrier. No research or science proves that pit bulls are an inherently aggressive breed. Yet the public, media, and often law enforcement still insist that pit bulls are vicious, only good for fighting, and need to be put down. Recently, a peace officer entered a home to stop a domestic fight. The dog barked at the officer, and the officer shot the dog. The pet looked like a stereotypical pit bull. The officer did not know if he was about to be attacked and if the dog was a pit bull. All he saw was a vicious barking dog, and he put him down without any additional questioning or even waiting for the owner to command the dog to sit. It is claimed that pit bulls were historically bred for fighting. The original breed, the pit bull terrier, was used for blood sports, but there are pit bull type breeds that are recognized as show dogs. The pit bull look alike, the American Stratfordshire terrier, is often shown at the Westminster Dog Show, and this dog does not have the breeding or the heritage that makes them aggressive fighting dogs. The problem with pit bulls? Their reputation is based on what they look like and not what they are. Does the dog have a large head, short hair, and small ears? Well, then it's a vicious pit bull. A pit bull's genealogy. Pit bulls, like all creatures, are products of their past. The pit bull's genealogy can be traced to the early 1800s United Kingdom. They are the products of old English white bulldogs used in a popular cruel blood sport known as bull baiting. Several bulldogs were let loose in a pen to harass a bull staked to the ground. The dogs were forced to attack the helpless bull for hours until the animal collapsed from fatigue or loss of blood. Gamers also use bulldogs to harass captured bears. The bear is staked to the ground and bulldogs are let loose to harass and bait the bear. These dogs were starved, beaten, abused, and forced to attack a bear until this animal too succumbed to injuries or exhaustion. To develop a more aggressive attack dog, breeders took the English Bulldogs with their sweet disposition, predictability, and dependability and bred them with at least one or more strains of Terrier. Terriers had the reputation of being agile, smart, and cunning, fairly easy to train, and highly affectionate. Once the two were bred, the dog produced looked menacing, had a high degree of nervous energy, and were easily trained. The new breed was smaller and more agile than the original bulldog, and this breeding gave the bulldog a higher level of prey drive and aggressiveness. When the British Parliament passed the Cruelty to Animals Act in 1835 and outlawed bull and bear baiting, the public turned their attention to ratting. 
ratting through bulldog terriers against rats in a pit. Here, the dogs were timed to see which dog could kill the greatest number of rats in the least amount of time. The word pit in Pitbull is said to come from ratting contests that took place in pits. The sport of ratting and dogfighting produced a great gambling market. The sporting public saw dogfighting as a great blood sport, and breeders went crazy breeding dogs with more agility and speed. Immigrating to America Pitbulls were brought to America by Irish immigrants who loved these dogs for protection and companionship. Pitbulls were also used for jobs that included farming, protecting the family from predators, watching children, and providing companionship. Some of the dogs were still bred as fighting dogs, but wiser heads knew that the pit bull was intelligent and friendly, not aggressive. How could these dogs originally bred for fighting be so gentle to people? Because of their usefulness in watching children, they were also trained to be gentle with their handlers. The majority of pit bulls were not trained as fighters, but earned their keep as hunters, guardians, herders, and companions. The owner said of pit bulls that the ease of training and a predisposition to interact well with humans was essential for all of their traditional jobs. You can find examples of exemplary pit bulls throughout early American history. One excellent example was Sally, a brindle Stratford Bull Terrier pit bull, who was the regimental mascot for the 11th Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry during the Civil War. Sally grew up a military dog from the time she was four weeks old. She followed her soldiers on marches and into battle. At the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863, Sally stood over the dead and wounded in the Union battle line at Oak Ridge. A monument to Sally stands in Gettysburg, directly in front of the monument that commemorates the 11th Pennsylvania Infantry. In 1903, an American pit bull terrier named Bud became the first dog to travel across the United States via car. Newspapers loved to follow Bud's exploits, and he was more famous than his owner. You have probably seen old photographs of Bud wearing goggles, his ears flapping in the wind, and a happy grin on his face. Examples of terrific pit bulls include Petey, the dog part of our gang, the Little Rascals, the Buster Brown Dog, and Nipper, the famous dog shown on RCA posters listening to music. Pitbulls were popular during World War I, World War II, and the Depression. These delightful dogs epitomized the average Joe, the American blue-collar worker. Pitbulls were all American, no fuss, no frills, just everyday working dogs who loved their families. Ever read about Sergeant Stubby? Stubby was a stray with a stub tail found near an army training camp at Yale. He was taken in and trained to respond to bugle calls, march with the troops, and salute fellow soldiers. His owner hid Stubby under his coat and boarded Stubby on a troop transport ship. Stubby fought in World War I, became the official mascot of the 102nd Infantry Regiment that was assigned to the 26th Division. He participated in 17 battles on the Western Front and is credited with capturing an enemy spy. Stubby saved his platoon from a dangerous mustard gas attack and was honored and rewarded when he returned home. In the first half of the 20th century, the pit bull was the dog of choice to be America's national dog. Pit bulls were the mascot chosen by the Buster Brown Shoe Company and by the United States military. Propaganda posters for each of the first two world wars featured pit bulls dressed in military gear with the American flag behind them. The first dog decorated with medals was Sergeant Stubby, and the opening of the century, the Navy viewed the pit bull as the mascot. Pit bulls at the height of the popularity were cheered, purchased as companions, and became the dog of choice for the rich and poor. Sadly, after World War II, pit bulls became somewhat obscure and did not enjoy the fame and accolades the wartime in the early 1950s brought them. They became just a dog and were bred so prolifically that pit bulls were often left to run in neighborhoods and fend for themselves. Why the bad reputation? Some say the bad reputation of the pit bulls came about in the 1980s with a Time magazine cover story blaring, the pit bull, friend, and killer. The cover illustrated a pit bull with teeth bared, and the story leaned towards statistics that portrayed the pit bull 
in an unfavorable light. Sports Illustrated then unleashed a cover article featuring a snarling pit bull with its teeth also bared and the headline blasting, Beware of this dog, the pit bull terrier. Whether or not these magazine articles were the cause of the sudden unwarranted attention to the pit bull, many adorable and well-behaved pit bulls found themselves in hot water unscrupulous individuals began to purchase and breed pit bulls and similar-looking dogs for criminal and dark purposes, and their reputation became dark and snarly. Pit bulls were and still are indiscriminately bred outside the American Dog Breeders Association regulations. Overbreeding quickly promoted an overpopulation of pit bull-type dogs who were seen running in the streets and causing problems. When dog bites are reported, there is always a reference to a pit bull and their killing ways. The public became afraid of the pit bull-looking dog, and breed-specific legislation banning pit bulls in many areas became popular. Breed-specific legislation, or BSL, blames the dogs and not the owners who raise and train them. BSL doesn't consider the dog's personality and actual behavior, and it punishes good dogs. BSL is often applied to dogs who look similar to an allegedly dangerous breed. Pit bulls listed as dangerous may make them more attractive to irresponsible owners. Bad reputations encourage using the pit bull for dog fights. BSL has not been proven to reduce nor prevent dog bites, and it ignores the fact that other dogs also attack people. Pit bulls took their place in a brotherhood that include breeds like Dobermans, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, as well as Husky breeds and Bloodhounds. Lists of the most dangerous dogs include the pit bull as number one. Blame the media for the pit bull's bad reputation. News outlets have created an air of terror around pit bulls, and the pit bull's notoriety keeps them in the spotlight when involved in domestic disputes and biting incidents. Pit bulls are also the current target of most breed-specific legislation and laws. Pit bulls are still frequently associated with sordid individuals who use them in fighting rings and those who arm them with studded collars. A good note to remember is that any dog can bite and maim under the wrong circumstances. The Fighting Dog the public sees these muscular dogs in spike collars hunkering on street corners with their criminal owners, and a natural fear evolved. Criminals trained pit bulls, then discarded them, and shelters began to fill up with these abused dogs. Dog fighting became a spectator sport that involves hundreds or maybe thousands of betting dollars. Mostly, there is a lot of ego and misplaced identity riding on the dogs. The owners feel a sense of worth in proportion to their dogs. Success in the ring is like the rest of us rooting for a football team. Dogfights became popular since these type of sports are easier to conceal from the law than bull or bear baiting. Dogfighting became a nefarious sport with thousands of dollars and illegal drugs being passed between spectators and Hardened criminals began to look at dogfighting as a way to make a quick buck. The way a pit bull looks has a great deal to do with why the pit bull is used for fighting. They're muscular, aggressive, and a nice size for fighting. Maybe they look strong and vicious, but if you look into the eyes of a pit bull, you will see there is no ill will or desire to fight reflected there. Be open to learning about the breed and you will fall in love with this gentle and lovable dog. Dog fighting promoters discovered that pit bulls with their athletic bodies and acrobatic moves were great entertainers in the fighting ring. But pit bulls don't like fighting. They fight because they're forced to and have no choice. They are beaten, chained away from human and other dog contact and illegal and legal drugs are used to make them appear stronger and not feel pain, hunger, or abuse. There are two types of pit bull fighters. One is the bloody impromptu battle that takes place in alleyways, abandoned buildings, and garages. Street fighting is not structured and is a status symbol for those who take part in the fights. In street fighting, rival gangs battle their dogs against the other gang's pit bulls. The winning gang is held up on a pedestal for being bad. The second type of dogfighting is professional. 
Professional dogfighting is organized and made up of secretive gangs where large amounts of money change hands. Professional dogfighters publish their magazines and report on the results of fights and the lines of successful fight dogs. These types of dogfight promoters claim that dogfighting is an art. Not so. Brutality and illegal activity will never be an art form. Dogfights can go on for hours and are gruesome. These fights often result in severe injury or death to one or both of the dogs. Their owners often kill dogs if they lose the fight. Pipples may survive a fight, but they are often maimed or die from infections. Little concern is shown for the health of pit bull fighting dogs. Losing dogs may never receive proper medical care, and even winning dogs are denied care. Owners will give their dogs antibiotics or drugs, or just staple shut gaping wounds. Dog fighting goes beyond brutality to the pit bulls. Illegal gambling, money laundering, racketeering, illegal firearms and drugs, blood loss or dehydration. One sheriff in Ohio said that 64 out of 65 dogfighting raids he conducted were centered around illegal drug trafficking. In the case of Bad News Kennels, law enforcement officers discovered the dogfighting arena when they were investigating drug allegations. The dogfights were just a diversion. It's been shown that children are often brought to dogfight matches. Allowing children to watch dogfighting in arenas is essentially child abuse and results in children growing up in a culture where violence against dogs is accepted and cheered. It has been proven that children who are exposed to violence often grow up to be violent in their social lives and against their families. Some gangs use dogfighting as a way to indoctrinate recruits. These recruits are given a pit bull puppy to train and research shows that there are places where school children exposed to dogfighting often run their own fights. Bad News Kennels The story of the pit bull would not be completed without a summary of the Bad News Kennels and Atlanta Hawks quarterback Michael Vick. In 2007, a search for drugs on a property in Surrey County, Virginia, owned by Michael Vick, discovered evidence of a dogfighting ring. Over 70 dogs, mostly pit bulls, were seized along with evidence that these animals were severely abused. The case drew publicity concerning the issues of animal abuse and dogfighting. It also drew attention to gambling and drug activities that often accompany dogfighting. Vic and three other principals were convicted of federal offenses, conspiracy charges, and imprisoned. The kennel sat on property that Vic owned. A tall wooden fence shielded the neighbors from the back and a two-story brick mansion surrounded by fencing was made to look inviting and proper from the street. There were several buildings painted flat black in the backyard, and these buildings housed the fighting ring and training facilities. Participants and spectators placed side bets on the outcomes of the fight, and thousands of dollars changed hands. In 2003, two Bad News Kennels pit bulls lost a fight, and the indictment states that Vic gave a money bag to the winners containing $23,000. Michael Vick claimed that he had no idea what was going on, but a testimony heard in court stated that when a pit bull was wounded in a losing fight, NFL star Michael Vick was consulted. It was on his order that the animal was doused with water and electrocuted. Some witnesses claimed they had seen Mr. Vick viciously kicking at a losing dog. Indictments claim that in early 2002, Bad News Kennels began purchasing pit bulls to train as fighters. If the dogs did not perform, they were put to death by hanging, drowning, or slamming to the ground. Michael Vick's pit bulls changed the face of animal rescue forever, and a fight for the reputation of the pit bull began. Normally, fighting dogs who were taken into custody were euthanized as damaged goods. However, the horror found at Bad News Kennels generated intense public sympathy, and Vick's pit bulls were given a second chance. 48 pit bulls were taken in by rescue groups, adopted into people's homes, and found permanent homes at shelters. These animals thrived beyond anyone's expectations, and some became therapy and service animals, and others were used in television and social media. More than 12 years ago, the Michael Vick dogfighting ring was discovered and busted, and his severely damaged and abused dogs were rescued and have proved that with love and care, 
they could become loving and caring members of a family. On June 21, 2019, after living a long and happy life, Layla, the last of the Vic Pitbulls rescued, passed away. She was over 15 years old, lived an exemplary life, and is mourned by her family. Fighting for the Pitbull's Reputation Clubs and societies are still fighting for Pitbull's rights. Through the horrible atrocity of the dogfighting case of Michael Vick in 2007, groups like Best Friends Animal Society and Bad Rap took a chance and rescued and rehabilitated Vick's fighters. Now, many of these dogs live peaceful lives in homes with pets and children. Pitbulls are now getting more positive attention. If dogs who were fighters and abused could be rehabilitated, imagine the possibilities for dogs born by irresponsible breeding or given up because people did not realize that a dog is a responsibility and an owner's privilege. Even Sports Illustrated retracted their previous bad review of Pitties by publishing a more positive article about pit bulls in a 2008 magazine. Adopting a pit bull should take research. Get to know the challenges of owning the loyal yet maligned breed. Note that 99% of issues that happen with pitties concern owners who are idiots rather than the breed itself. This breed has so many good traits. Ignore the media that focuses on the negative. Many pit bulls are being recognized for their service and heroics. Search and rescue pitties Cheyenne, Dakota, and Tahoe were involved in rescues during the 9-11 disaster, the 2003 shuttle tragedy for NASA, and the Lacey Peterson investigation. Pit bulls are becoming certified therapy dogs and work with education groups teaching people about dogs. The pit bull has an inbred natural love for people, eager to please attitudes, and an uncanny ability to withstand pain. These traits led them to be tolerant in situations where some dogs might not be so tolerant. Pit bull lovers, a Facebook group of pit bull lovers, say, some people have a hard time getting around, and it's not altogether unlikely their toes might get stepped on or run over by a wheelchair. I worked a session where a woman had a sensory problem, and she had a compulsive need to pinch things extremely hard once she got a hold of them. While she never pinched Angel, a pit bull, she could have if we were not paying attention, and the outcome would have been Angel having discomfort but not reacting with aggression. Another breed might have been driven to biting or growling at a person like this. Pit bulls are being trained to work on police forces. Pitties are quickly becoming certified to visit hospitals and comfort patients. Pitties are highly trainable, sensitive, and loving, and there is no end to the things they can do. Just give them a chance.